अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा संबुद्ध साधु सो ओके सो वी विल स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट सूत्र व्हिच इज अंगूत्र निकाय बुक ऑफ टेन फिफ्टी सिक्स परसेप्शन और हियर वन थिंग which sister kima has pointed out to me is that the bikkhus which is whenever they are used they are meaning the practitioners or the people who are practicing so you can say students uh, or uh, practitioners or uh, or the people who are actually uh, doing the meditation so over here uh, the buddha starts bikkhus these 10 perceptions when developed and cultivated are of great fruit and benefit culminating in deathless having the deathless as their consume consumation what then the perception of unattractiveness uh, the perception of unattractiveness is something which we feel uh, kind of as beautiful we realize that the basic nature of impermanence is there in that so after a time it will kind of fade away it will uh, kind of change that is the perception of unattractiveness the perception of death the perception of death uh, is uh, for people who are kind of afraid uh, of uh, death or are kind of very apprehensive they can develop that perception now one other thing about those uh, 10 perception which has been given over here is that they are to be developed in a which can kind of over correct yourself by kind of uh, over focusing on say a perception of death you may uh, find that you may uh, be attracted to death uh, rather than uh, continuing the practice that happened with uh, one of the group of uh, bikkhus when buddha had gone for his rains retreat uh, in seclusion when he found out that uh, many of the bikkhus had uh, uh, like uh, developed the perception of death and the developed the perception of uh, unattractiveness towards the body to the extent that uh, it was unhealthy and it was not helpful in uh, their uh, positions for uh, killing them so that guy was kind of a uh, uh, mentally an unstable guy and uh, or very dull uh, so he just accepted that offer and uh, uh, killed a few of the bikkhus so that is uh, something which you have to understand that those perception which are been there are to be developed to kind of correct yourself it is kind of uh, if something is bent you kind of over bend it a little bit so it can come into this thing but you can, you should not do it uh, too much or it will be of a counter purpose so it should be in the same manner the this perception are there to kind of balance yourself so uh, the perception of that is there then the perception of repulsiveness of food if you are too much attracted to food and food becomes the central point of your life then you can uh, kind of develop that perception the perception of non delight in the entire world uh, this is like uh, uh, many of the advanced practitioner also have some kind of a attractiveness towards uh, say deva uh, uh, rams or uh, they want to go to the uh, arupa jana rams Uh, or want to uh, go into the brahma uh, 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 kind of uh, as a brahma you they want to get uh, reborn so then they uh, develop a perception that a non non delight into the entire world there are no, no uh, places which are secure that is what the buddha is teaching the perception of impermanence uh, seeing everything as impermanent say if there is a a uh, food is there then you uh, say this is impermanent if there is any any clothing is there any any anything which you are in contact with you uh, develop a perception perception of impermanence the perception of suffering in the impermanent why is there uh, suffering in the impermanent because if somebody something is not there it comes to into being that you like but what the nature is there it goes and when when something is uh, which you like is taken away from you even if it is a small pen or uh, some small uh, item from your house then it is painful so that is the reason you have to develop your perception of suffering in the impermanent the perception of not self in the in what is suffering 
so i had uh, taken up the uh, this uh, point uh, previously also that, that that when there is something which is uh, impermanent if, uh, so if something which is suffering then it cannot be self uh, if there is uh, something which is uh, impermanent then it cannot be the self so the, the, uh, each characteristic has the uh, uh, pointer towards the, both the uh, other points if it is not self then it, ca it cannot be uh, it, it will be suffering. So that is the perception of non-self in what is suffering, the perception of abandoning, then the perception of dispassion and the perception of cessation. So uh, those kind of perceptions are, uh, have to be de developed. So the perception of non-self in what is suffering. So the non-self is a kind of a perception uh, that is uh, useful because if you develop a, a perception of impermanence or non-self or uh, suffering, that is, uh, if something uh, is impermanent, it is suffering. If it is something is non-self, uh, then that is also suffering. So you have uh, when you develop a, a perception of impermanence, you de develop a, a perception of suffering and of non-self. If you develop a, a, a perception of non-self, you develop a perception of the, it being impermanent and it being suffering. So when you are uh, developing that perception, the, the trifactor is there in those three, uh, which are the kind of uh, superior uh, points of perception. These 10 perceptions when developed and cultivated are of great benefit, the great fruit and benefit, culminating in the deathless, having deathless as their consumption. So, uh, sorry, consummation. So, this is the uh, short sutta about the perception because that was the questions about perception, which perception one should develop. So, now which uh, I personally like because uh, it was a sutta which uh, when I was uh, going through uh, this, I kind of got an insight into uh, what is the nature of uh, the dana which we are doing so i i was kind of uh, interested in the nature of dana and how that nature of dana kind of affects us so this is a, a sutta about uh, brahmin janasoni so he is uh, a brahmin who uh, kind of uh, came to buddha and was asking the question about this thing uh, about giving gifts so okay one second huh? I have to just find that sutta. That link I have given that is uh, Angutra Nikaya. 10, So I am not sure what has happened. One second, I am just uh, trying to figure that out uh, or I will uh, read from the uh, Bikhu Sujato version online or I wanted to read from the version of uh, Bikhu Bodhi. This uh, good
Okay. So we start uh, now with the Sutta, uh, Angutra Nikaya 10, 177. Then the Brahmin uh, Janasoni uh, approached the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with him. When they had uh, concluded their greetings and cordial talk, he sat down to one side and said to the Blessed One, Master Gotama, we Brahmins give gifts and perform the uh, memorial rites for the dead. Now, this memorial rites are not the same as the funeral, uh, the actual funeral. This is the, uh, what is done after uh, the person has passed away. There is a certain uh, amount of uh, gifts given or uh, dana is done for the departed uh, relative. There may be kind of a, uh, over here there in India, there is an elaborate uh, process uh, by which this dana has been uh, is performed. In a Buddhist country, most of this uh, uh, ceremony is of giving to the monks. They give uh, ceremonially whatever is required uh, to the monks and uh, they kind of build something in the temple, like a physical, uh, like a wall they want to build or they, they may build a, a kind of a roof or uh, they may uh, build a gate, something physical they build. So there is a different uh, ways of giving to the uh, monks. So over here he is asking about the Indian uh, act of uh, performing memorial rites for the dead. With the thought, let our gift be of benefit to our departed relatives and family members. Let our departed relatives and family members partake of our gift. Can our gift actually be of benefit to our departed relatives and families? Can our departed relatives and family members actually partake of our gift? So that's a kind of fair question. If somebody is uh, doing an act uh, of dana, then he may want to know that how that is affecting. Uh, so uh, one point uh, I, I, I liked of this uh, sutta is it is kind of very uh, precise in what the Buddha is saying. So you have to be careful of how to interpret this uh, sutta. I, uh, but I think I got a lot of insight into uh, what the dana is there and how it works. So that is the reason I'm sharing this sutta with uh, you. On a right occasion, Brahmin, it can be of benefit, not on a wrong occasion, but Master Gautama, what is a right occasion and what is a wrong occasion? Here Brahmin, someone destroys life, takes what is not given, engages in sexual misconduct, speaks falsehood, speaks divisively, speaks harshly, indulges in idle chatter. So these are the four precepts you can recognize. The first four pre precepts uh, a person breaks. He is full of longing, has a mind of ill will, and holds wrong view. With the breakup of the body after death, he is reborn in hell. So uh, there, this is a person who does not keep the precepts. Plus, additionally, he also has a mind which is full of longing, which is craving, which is, is a mind is of ill will and holds the wrong view. So this person, uh, when he is uh, life is over uh, in this uh, body, then he is reborn in hell. He sustains himself and subsists, uh, subsists there on the food of the hell being. There, this is a wrong occasion when the gift is not of benefit to one living there. So now uh, Buddha is saying that, say if a person uh, or your relative uh, is passed away and he goes to hell, then uh, over there, that time is a wrong occasion for him to kind of uh, benefit from that. Uh, gift which you are giving. Someone else destroys life and holds wrong view. With the breakup of the body after that, he is reborn in the animal realm. He su sustains himself and subsists there on the food of animals. This too is living there. So over here, a person uh, passes away in the next life, he is reborn as an animal. That is also a wrong occasion. Still another abstains from the destruction of life, from taking what is not given, from sexual misconduct, from false speech, from divisive speech, from harsh speech, from ideal chatter. He is without longing of goodwill and holds right view. With the breakup of the body, after that, he is reborn 
in companionship with human beings. He sustains himself and subsists there on the food of human being. This too is a wrong occasion when the gift is not of uh, keeps the precepts and does not have longing and has right view. Still, uh, and then he is reborn as a human being. Now, in this uh, place also, he is uh, subject to uh, the uh, uh, whatever is there as as per his karma. But over here, uh, when uh, that gift which you are giving is not kind of benefit, uh, he says. Once. He may be even born in the companionship with the devas. He sustains, sustains himself and subsists there on the food of devas. This too is a wrong occasion when the gift is not of benefit to one living there. So even if a person keeps his precepts and uh, does that, then he, uh, as a, when he's born as a human being, he's born in a good uh, birth. He gets a, as a comfortable birth. If he is born as a deva, he is uh, he is comfortable and he is uh, can uh, kind of uh, enjoy his uh, time over there. So that those two occasions also, uh, as well as uh, the occasion which he said, uh, if he is born a, a, as an animal or as a as in a hell realm, that also and uh, in the occasion when the person is born as a human being and as a deva. Those two occasions, uh, whatever which you are giving as a gift, is not a kind of, uh, it's considered a wrong, uh, this thing. So now uh, there is a, uh, uh, there is a another third type of, uh, uh, there is a third type of uh, occasion that is still another destroys life. That is, he uh, destroys life and uh, he uh, breaks precepts and holds wrong view. With the breakup of the body, after that, he is reborn in the sphere of afflicted spirits. He sustains himself and subsists there on the food of afflicted spirits or else he sustains himself there on what is what his friends, companions, relative or family members in this world offer to him. This is a right occasion when the gift is of benefit to one uh, living there. So this is an occasion where a, a person does not creep the precepts, has longing, uh, is uh, has it will and does not hold a uh, right view is reborn in the afflicted spirits. Now, afflicted spirits are spirits which are also called hungry ghosts. So, when you are uh, giving uh, dana, uh, their relatives are giving dana in their name, then they uh, can uh, receive food and they will feel uh, relief uh, in their state of uh, existence. At that time uh, is the right occasion, and that time when you give dana, that uh, that uh, afflicted spirit is kind of getting relief. Uh, your relative is getting relief. But now there is a deeper point which uh, the Buddha is saying. Now this point does not get uh, changed uh, uh, currently. Uh, so in uh, in side note, I'll tell you that uh, in the, both the cases, the Buddha has given uh, the same uh, description for somebody who goes to a human realm and somebody who goes to the uh, Deva realm or somebody who uh, goes to the animal realm or uh, the hungry ghost or the uh, hell realm. So why is there a difference between the, uh, what a person does and how he uh, gets his next life? The, the difference is that what he does in this, this life uh, kind of uh, counteracts uh, the wrong things also. Like uh, say if a person uh, 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 does not keep the precept but does dana, then what happens is that at the time of death, his uh, kind of good uh, karma of dana comes as uh, being reborn uh, in an animal realm and that too in a comfortable uh, position. So like uh, you see there are a lot of pets uh, currently in the world which live uh, better lives than uh, human beings, you know, they are cared for and they are, they have they are, they are like a family member so this is a kind of a, a result of them uh, not keeping the precept but doing dana 
So in that way, that uh, karma or the result of karma can change by doing dana. Dana as a uh, as a uh, larger concept is uh, kind of um, fruitful for you in any situation. So over here, that <coughs> the deeper point is now uh, the Buddha is coming to that. But Master Gautama, who partakes of the gift if that deceased relative or family member has not been reborn in that place? Other departed relatives or family members who have been reborn in that place partake of the gift. So now uh, Buddha is very clear about what he's saying is that uh, see if that relative of you which you were kind of uh, keeping in mind and giving the uh, gift or uh, giving dana, if that is not reflected uh, in, in that or that he is not in the uh, realm of the angry, angry ghost, some other relatives will be there who can benefit. So this uh, gift which you have given has not gone to waste. It has uh, some benefit which has been acquired from that gift. There is not, nowhere that uh, when you give a, a gift or give a dana, that goes uh, without result. So, uh, but Master Gautam, how many members? Nor any other have been reborn in that uh, place. So, that is a kind of a logical question uh, because he uh, is unable to see. He is asking a logical question that uh, what if uh, my relative is not there or other relatives are also not there. But kind of uh, Buddha has a vision to kind of give this answer. Over this long stretch of time in samsara, Brahmin, it is impossible and inconceivable for that place to be devoid of one's departed relatives and family members. Further, for the donor too, it is not fruitless. So what he, uh, Buddha is saying that this uh, reply can be given only by the Buddha because he can see. Uh, what the Buddha says is, I know and see. And only then he gives information about anything. So the Buddha is informing uh, him that in this long samsara, it is inconceivable that there is no relative who is there uh, who may benefit from your doing a dana. Uh, so that is uh, uh, to be kind of conceived that how long this samsara is and how many relatives we have. One, in another place, the Buddha says that it is kind of very difficult that you meet somebody and he was not your mother, father or a relative in your previous life. So, uh, so uh, you can uh, just imagine any uh, meeting anybody and uh, that uh, person may be your relative. So that is the uh, amount of time we have spent in the samsara and that is the number of uh, connections which we have with everybody. So there are certain concepts saying that everybody is a big family or uh, the earth is a one family. Those kind of concepts have come from those kind of teachings the Buddha is giving. But they are kind of giving it in a kind of a superficial manner as a... Uh, uh, feel good uh, manner but Buddha is giving as a fact because he can see and know what is happening and then he's giving it as a fact that any relative uh, anybody uh, uh, who uh, is there your relative will be there in one of the realms so you should, uh, should you can consider and extrapolate that somebody of your relatives is in a hell or in an animal realm and a, in a human realm uh, and then in a uh, Deva Ram. Also, there are your relatives are there, the people you knew. Anybody you meet may also uh, turn out to be your relative in the past. So that is a, a big connection which the Buddha is kind of giving. But he also says that even for the giver, it is not fruitless. So if you are giving a dana, that means that uh, uh, it will be beneficial to your relatives but it will also be benefit, uh, beneficial for you. So it has a dual benefits, not just, just a single benefit. Does Master Gautama poise the value of giving even on the wrong occasion? Brahmin, I poise the value of giving even on the wrong occasion. Here, Brahmin, someone destroys life, takes what is not given, engages in sexual misconduct, speaks falsehood, speaks div divisively, speaks harshly indulges in ideal chatter. He is full of longing, has a mind of ill will, holds wrong view. He gives an ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink, 
clothing and a vehicle, garlands, scents, ornaments. I don't. I can't pronounce this. This must be a, a kind of a, some scents, bedding, dwellings, and lightings. With the breakup of the body after death, he is reborn in companionship with elephants. There he gains food and drink, garlands and various ornaments. Since he has destroyed life and held wrong view, destroyed life and all the rest and held wrong view with the breakup of the body, after that he is reborn in companionship with elephants. But since he gave an ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink, he there gains food and drink, garlands and various ornaments. So thus, uh, the Buddha is giving a point that if you are uh, giving dana, if you are uh, giving uh, gifts uh, to benefit your relatives, then your relatives will definitely benefit. But it is also beneficial to you uh, that you will also get benefit of that uh, what you have given. Someone else destroys life and holds wrong view. He gives an ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink and lighting. With the breakup of the body after that, he is reborn in the companionship with horses, cattle, dogs. There he gains food and drink, garlands and various ornaments. Since he here destroys life and held wrong view, with the breakup of the body after that, he is reborn in companionship with the horses, cattle, dogs. But since he gave an ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink, he there gains food and drink, garlands and various ornaments. So this is the way for all different kinds of beings. Still another abstains from destruction of life after taking what is not given from sexual misconduct, from false speech, from divisive speech, from harsh speech, from ideal chatter. He is without longing of, of goodwill and holds right view. He gives an ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink, clothing, a vehicle, garlands, scents, and augments, beddings, dwellings, and lightings. With the breakup of the body after death, he is reborn in championship, companionship of human beings. There, he gains the five objects of human sensual pleasure. So even if a person keeps his precepts and additionally he is giving uh, dana, then uh, when he is reborn as a human being, he reborn uh, uh, in a position where he gets uh, all uh, kind of sensual pleasures from the five senses he can experience. Since he has attained uh, from the destruction of life and held right view with the breakup of the body, after that he is reborn in the companionship with human beings. And since he gave a ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink, he gains the five objects of human sensual pleasure. That means he is born rich, uh, technically, because that is a, a kind of definition now in the current uh, period. When a person has money, he can buy whatever pleasures he wants to gain. Still another abstains from the destruction of life and holds right view. He, gains as a, uh, he gives an ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink and lighting. With the breakup of the body, after death, he is reborn in companionship with the devas. There he gains the five objects of celestial sensual pleasure. So even he is born in the Devaram, he gets an additional kind of a better uh, uh, experience of that Deva Ram. Since he is abstained from destruction of life and held right view with the breakup of the body, after that he is reborn in the companionship with the Devas. And since he gave, gave, he gave a ascetic or a Brahmin food and drink, he gains there the five objects of celestial sensual pleasure. That is why I said further for the donor too, it is not fruitless. It is astonishing and amazing, Master Rugotama, that there is reason to give gifts and perform the memorial rites for the dead. Since for the donor too, it is not fruitless. So it is Brahmin, so it is Brahmin. For the donor too, it is not fruitless. Excellent Mother, Master Gotama. Let Master Gotama accept me as a lay follower from who from today has gone for, uh, for refuge for life. So uh, he is very happy with the uh, teaching the uh, Buddha has given because he has clarified uh, in detail. And uh, he has, uh, Buddha has clarified in a detail in a manner that is 
uh, somebody uh, of somebody who has uh, knows and sees and gives the information. He is not uh, speculating. He is not using logic, uh, but Buddha is using uh, the direct uh, knowledge to kind of clarify certain points. So this uh, uh, sutta kind of uh, I liked uh, because it uh, gave me an in-depth uh, perspective on the dana which a person is uh, performing. So all kinds of dana uh, are beneficial. So if it is done in any manner, so one of the suttas I kind of quote uh, uh, many times is uh, where uh, the Buddha says, even if you give it to an animal, you get 100 times uh, the return. If you give it to a human being, who is a kind of a general, uh, not a uh, uh, follower of the Buddha, even uh, to a, a normal human being, if you give uh, some gift, it comes back a thousand times. If it is an ascetic uh, of uh, who is not following the right view, but against jhanas, you get 100,000 times return. So uh, this is uh, a kind of a, a benefit of giving. You can give to anybody. Even if you give to a, an animal, there is a benefit you can uh, acquire from that. The, uh, the main aim of our giving is not to gain benefit, but uh, to kind of have a uh, perspective of a shared humanity, you know, that is the best uh, kind of a view which we have and to develop our uh, perspective, perspective of uh, uh, which you call abandonment. So whatever uh, we uh, kind of uh, take for ourselves, that this is me, this is mine, this is myself. So you kind of, uh, kind of uh, develop the perspective of uh, being uh, as uh, a part of the whole uh, uh, this uh, teaching, which is of uh, understanding that everything is impermanent and everything which we have uh, is one day anyways going to go. Uh, to enhance that point, the Buddha says that uh, uh, like somebody who has his house is on fire, uh, will throw away uh, the furniture out of the door, you know, just to kind of salvage it. That is, that is in the manner you have to kind of do the dana so you can uh, get uh, uh, whatever you have given is the actually the benefit which you are gaining. So that that those are the things uh, kind of uh, given uh, as a dana. Dana is a big subject and uh, uh, by reading the suttas, I have gained a lot of insights into dana and uh, for me, uh, I had uh, kind of a different uh, worldview, a point of view of the dana and uh, giving. And this kind of uh, Buddha's teachings are kind of getting a more deeper uh, understanding of. And it is also uh, giving us a finer points in the dana and how it helps uh, us in different ways and how it helps our uh, extended family. Uh, so this uh, kind of sutta uh, has a lot of uh, flavor to it, uh, according to me. So that is uh, what I have shared. And now uh, I would be open to question answers, uh, qu uh, questions and answers are from me. <laughs> so uh, I'm open to questions. Uh, is there yeah. any? Yes, Bhante, hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the talk. I, I, I had a question about uh, sharing merit with the devas since there's in this sutta it says well there's there's no real uh benefit from it let's say but we do share merit with the devas at, at like the end may devas and nagas of mighty power yeah. share this merit of power so it, it might not be i thought well maybe it's not uniform maybe there are some devas who are like uh uh also forward. Yeah, see, merits is a subject. Uh, there's an, as the merit is there as a subject, uh, I, I kind of uh, find that that is a, a different way of looking at it that other than dana. Dana is a practice where we what we have, we are giving. Merit is a practice where it is like, uh, say, if there is a candle and the other candle is burned, because so nothing is lost from our, our end. So a merit is a, a certain kind of uh, uh, equivalence to metta. When you are doing a loving kindness, uh, then uh, what we give, uh, uh, it does not mean it diminishes, it kind of increases. So in merit also, when you say anumudana, 
the, that means that I rejoice in the merit you have made. And that is also a, a part of making merit. So when you say Anumodana, you gain merit. So uh, you see that uh, the merit works in a, a little bit different manner than uh, what uh, Dana works, uh, that is uh, giving something uh, or that is specified as a physical objects. Uh, they have given a list of them. So uh, metta is also the same way. When you are giving metta, when you are uh, doing a meditation and you are giving metta to the directions, then you find that your metta has grown. But it has not diminished. It does not start up with a big metta feeling and then it kind of uh, gets smaller. It starts off with a small feeling, but it grows. Then in the same way, metta and merits are uh, uh, things when we are sharing, it grows for uh, us and it also benefits the other. But uh, specific uh, ways how merit sharing works is, I think mechanics, uh, I have not uh, uh, come across any uh, specific suttas about that. But uh, merit is kind of uh, uh, in the same vein of uh, metta or brahma giragas when we are sharing merit. Uh, but uh, if I get a little more information or I'll uh, research that and I'll share uh, sometimes, uh, someday maybe uh, more on that subject. Anything Thank you. else? Yeah, that, that, that answers yeah. my question. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, hello, Bhante. Yes. Uh, just I have one uh, little question. Yes, small yes. question like uh, yeah. we share the merit to yeah. all the beings in all directions. Can we consider this as dana? That can be considered as I told you. This are not kind of a uh, specific uh, uh, as a dana, uh, but we can consider this as a sharing of uh, goodwill or sharing of metta. So mm -hmm. uh, dana in the uh, in the in the suttas in the sutta sense is uh, considered to be. Uh, something which is uh, given, uh, which is physical. So this is, uh, it is considered uh, in a, like uh, uh, Bhante or Sister Kema says that the metta practice is also a dana practice, where we are uh, giving our uh, metta to others. But technically, uh, this can be kind of a little bit of difference between uh, giving dana and giving uh, goodwill. But it has still benefits. So when we are sharing merits, we also gain merit for the sharing of merit. And if we uh, are rejoicing others making merit, also is a merit making. So merit making is a kind of a, a positive uh, a frame of mind or a perspective where we are kind of increasing uh, the uh, merit by uh, sharing it. We are increasing the merit by uh, being rejoiced. That is the reason Anumudana is something which uh, is the word which is used a lot in uh, Thailand. Because uh, uh, if somebody is giving uh, a gift to a uh, monk, everybody in the audience will say Anumodana because they are also rejoicing in the person. Uh, so there, there's a part of uh, uh, mudita also uh, when you are doing an Anumodana. So that is a, a one part. So it is a part of a, a positive cycle and metta. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Bhante? Yes. Ah, uh, so the question about uh, giving to ascetic or Brahmin, so in the context of uh, what the Buddha was um, talking about, let's say we talk about today, the uh, the world that we live in today. Um, so what what would be let's say the group of people that we could consider fall into the category of uh, this context where the Buddha came from, yes. and yes. does it uh, is it important that that particular individual keeps their precepts? Yeah, that is what we kind of uh, clarified in this. Uh, 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 sutta about the person who is giving, he is not keeping the precepts. But uh, the person which we are giving to, uh, there are categories which the Buddha has uh, uh, classif uh, classified, like uh, animals are there, normal lay people, 
then there are people who are not following the buddha's practice but they achieve jhanas that is one point of concentration jhana if you giving to somebody like that it is 100000 time you get the uh, benefit so but if you give to somebody uh, individual who is uh, following the buddha's ways and achieving jhanas you get 100000 into 100000 times but if you are giving it to uh, any uh, kind of uh, sota panna or more then there is a, like a unlimited amount uh, you get means an incalculable amount of merit you uh, acquire uh, then uh, if you are giving it to uh, in the stages to uh, a arahan and then from arahan to pacheka buddha from pacheka buddha to a buddha living buddha so if you are uh, giving uh, to uh, a living buddha uh, the gift that has also an uncalculable uh, amount of uh, returns uh, but uh, it is explained to uh, uh, in such a manner that there is a, a pond which is there there is a lake there is a sea and there is a ocean so there uh, they, they have uncalculable amount of drops of waters but they are uh, each is uh, uh, means increasingly more so but the buddha himself says that uh, once uh, when his mother came to give him gifts uh, uh, of a robe he said that give it to the sangha it has more benefit so in our understanding of what uh, teaching of the buddha when you are giving it to the sangha it has the maximum benefit and uh, as uh, the person who is receiving the gift uh, that person who is receiving the gift should be of uh, uh, precepts or not that is not uh, relevant over here when you are giving a gift to uh, your mind has to be kind of uh, clear about what you are doing that i am giving a gift to the sangha not to a individual so when you are giving a, a gift uh, that is the reason we ask for a sangha dana we say give it to the sangha for the sangha's uh, maintenance why we do it is specifically to kind of underline this point that when you are giving you give it as a sangha okay so that has the maximum benefit now the buddha says that there is a time which will come that uh, the monks will be working on the fields and they will wear this uh, orange uh, scarf around their neck and this, they will still call themselves a monk they will have a family and they will work in the fields but to that person also if, if with the mind of giving to the sangha you give the gift it will have the same benefit of you giving to a sangha a member who is an arahan and you give the gift to the uh, arahan uh, uh, giving as a sangha dana that has the same benefit so uh, you should not worry about the receiver and does he keep the precepts or not so now there are uh, in one of the sutras the buddha says that, that <coughs> sorry that uh, the gift which is given can be fruitful from uh, two sides one is that if you are giving the gift with a mind which is of uh, purity and clarity if it is a mind of purity and clarity and you are giving a gift to a person that gift become fu fulfilled okay but say what happens is a person gives a gift his mind is not clear he does not give it with a good attitude but the receiver is of a clarity of a clear clear mind and a receiver is worthy to receive gifts then he will get the benefit of that gift because that big gift becomes fruitful so now the situation is there that the giver is not giving it a clarity of mind and the receiver is not receiving it correctly then that gift is fruitless and the other uh, gift which is fruitless is when a arahan gives to an arahan those two occasion the gift has no merit because an arahan has no uh, kind of merit he can make because he he is an arahan he has already gone out of the uh, wheel of samsara and he gives something a gift to an another arahan that is no benefit but if the uh, the receiver and the giver both are not uh, of a clear, a clear mind then uh, that gift is not of benefit so now the, uh, i'll give you an example of the giver who was not a clear mind but the receiver was uh, there is a sutta where the buddha is uh, uh, met in the afternoon by a king so buddha says why are you out in the afternoon uh, so he says that i had to uh, confess a, a property of a person who had died without uh, any uh, uh, sons or heirs so he did not have anybody to give this property so i, I had to uh, confess it as per the law 
and I, I, I will give the protection to her uh, wife till her that uh, they will take care of the uh, family. That is her wife. Because uh, so uh, he asked the Buddha, why is that, that the person who is the who was the richest guy in the uh, whole of uh, my country uh, died without a son? So Buddha says that this particular person had given a uh, food to a uh, Pacheka Buddha. But after giving the food, he had a doubt in his mind that why did I give it to this guy? I would have given it to my workers, a little more food. Because of that uh, uh, thought which had come, after giving, he wanted it to take it back. So that is the reason uh, for 12 lifetimes, he was born as the richest person in the uh, country. But uh, he was uh, not born uh, with a son. He did not have any uh, uh, sons. Because of that, that uh, money reverted back to the kingdom. So uh, when you are giving, if you are giving is, uh, is not of a good mind, but the receiver uh, is of a good, uh, uh, is worthy of receiving, then that has benefits. But because of your mind, you can kind of have, uh, that it was not something that, where he gave uh, with a uh, doubtful mind, but the receiver, uh, he did not receive any give, uh, any benefits. He got benefits from uh, giving because he had given it to a Pacheka Buddha, just one meal. He had given to a Pacheka Buddha, and that benefit was that for 12 lifetimes he was reborn as the richest person in the country. So that is how uh, a gift uh, when you are giving, you should not worry about the other person. What you should be clear about your uh, clear mind wh why you are giving. You have should have a clarity and whom you are giving to. If you have that clarity, I am giving it to the uh, Sangha, uh, say, uh, if you are giving uh, over here in uh, India, Sangha in India for their support and uh, may they, they, it be benefit for me and may, uh, or uh, I share this merit with my family or the departed relatives and be clear and then do the uh, uh, donation. So that clarity of mind is more important than the other person. Other person is keeping the precepts or not or other person is... is uh, has uh, achieved uh, this uh, level or that level of meditation or not is irrelevant that time. Because when you are giving to the Sangha, you uh, get benefit regardless of the other person. Okay. Is there any other question? Yeah. Uh, Bante, I have a, thank you, Bante. Uh, I, actually, I have another question yeah. um, from the earlier sutta, the first one. Yeah. So the last one on the perception of cessation. So, yeah. can, uh, can the perception of the uh, perception of cessation? Yes. Yeah, Bante, can you uh, explain further about this one? See, uh, for this, I have uh, even discussed with uh, Bante. Uh, this is a, a kind of a, a perception. I am kind of we are not very clear about because. Uh, uh, th this may be uh, something in the language also, uh, in the Pali, how it is uh, uh, translated. Uh, because what happens is that in meditation, uh, when we are uh, sitting in meditation, uh, we are uh, 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 often find ourselves in the neither perception or non-perception. Uh, that that uh, period, uh, we are unable to kind of focus our attention on any, any, uh, th uh, any kind of thing. But uh, in a general manner, we can say that the perception uh, of cessation is that you uh, are uh, kind of uh, uh, recognizing the kind of uh, passing away of uh, everything. Passing away or the uh, cessation of uh, that, uh, the falling of, say, uh, the uh, a feeling is there. Say a feeling is there and then you uh, notice the cessation of that feeling. If you are uh, uh, seeing a kind of a movie, then you see the ending. So this is kind of ceased, the movie ceased. So this is in a general manner, but there, there is a kind of a deeper uh, meditational aspect, uh, which I am unfortunately, I, at this point of time, I will not be able to kind of elaborate into. Because I spoke to uh, Bhante also, it is very difficult to kind of, uh, uh, because there is a contradiction over here with the neither perception or non-perception aspect. And uh, while uh, one of the sutta also mentions that uh, 
uh, while getting out of uh, like uh, cessation, you uh, kind of uh, put your attention on the ending of cessation, which is kind of not possible. If you are in cessation, then there is no perception. So how will you put your attention? So there, there, there are certain aspects uh, which are kind of uh, complicated and uh, maybe uh, lost in translation and how it is translated so, or uh, how it is perceived as a in context. So we should kind of uh, investigate more on that. So there I don't have a clear answer for that. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Any, uh, uh, maybe a sister Kema uh, may not be able to do the Wednesday. Let us see how, how she is because uh, she will come in the night and she is coming in a kind of a fairly uh, comfortable uh, flight uh, because it is a flight directly from uh, Chicago to Delhi. It's a 15 hour flight, but it is uh, uh, no stopovers, no changing in between. Normally, uh, Bante has also started traveled. Whenever he has traveled, he has to have a break over there. So she is uh, then from Delhi. Uh, she comes to Mumbai at eight o'clock. Uh, she uh, arrives on Tuesday. So Wednesday, I'm not sure if uh, uh, Wednesday she is unable to do it. Then I'll come and uh, we'll uh, do another sutra, or uh, we will see how it goes. And uh, she will also go into, uh, 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 she will be having her surgery uh, soon. So uh, uh, we are kind of uh, uh, taking her to a hospital and to get her tests done. So she can kind of uh, have that uh, uh, knee replacement done because uh, she has a problem walking and go going up and down stairs. She's 72 and uh, her knees are definitely weak. And uh, the doctor has uh, already suggested she had done all the tests and everything. And the doctor had suggested that uh, both knees to be replaced. So let us see. Uh, we will uh, see how it goes. And then I can, I may be joining the more uh, of those the talks. So give me uh, some kind of uh, topics uh, if you are interested in. Then uh, I, uh, you can share it with uh, me. And uh, we can kind of uh, come up with uh, talks on that topics. So uh, any other uh, person wants to kind of uh, ask questions? Everybody is... How was your journey, Bhante? About my journey. Journey was yeah. okay. Yeah. Very comfortable journey. It was yeah. only two hours, 20 minutes uh, from okay. uh, Mumbai. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was uh, kind of uh, awake because my friend uh, has a specialty of peanuts, uh, which mm -hmm. he had made. I think your friend uh, Girish will uh, kind of uh, give you an update on that peanuts. So I had given a packet of that to him also. So he started making those uh, things and uh, it was too late. And then mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, uh, to go early in the morning because I like to be early. Uh, that is all uh, Bante also taught me, always be four hours uh, before the flight uh, at the airport. So I, uh, I did not have uh, much sleep. Other than that, I am okay. I'll have to get a nap now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, it was uh, very comfortable, Not, no problems. There is a person I know over here, he uh, runs a cab service, uh, Locally, he mm -hmm. sent me a cab, so everything okay. happened clockwork. <laughs> Very fine. So, yes. Sister Kema, what about her dental problem? Is it solved? Dental problem? A dental problem, she has not been able to look because she had to go to uh, uh, means, uh, Damasuka. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that is the reason uh, she uh, kind of did not go to the JJ hospital where she was going to check mm -hmm. uh, on that. Uh, so currently what we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to get her to uh, the uh, through the process of the knee surgery which is the okay. major uh, part which we are kind of want to get yeah. over with so we would have also have to discuss because there is a kind of a few uh, things about the cost and everything because today major informed us that uh, there could be a 
40 uh, percent surcharge uh, on uh, international uh, uh, patients okay. in the hospital. That's it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the government tax or something like that for uh, uh, patients who come uh, from international uh, destinations. So okay. we'll have to figure out that out and then uh, we proceed. Okay. So that, uh, we are, uh, still, but she has to do her pr uh, preliminary tests and uh, go to the doctor and mm -hmm. get the appointment and uh, we can, because Bharat knows uh, the doctor personally. So there are many things which can kind of get uh, resolved okay. uh, because of uh, the communication is uh, smoother. Yeah. So let us see. So uh, uh, we can talk, uh, I can call you later. I just want to talk about uh, uh, the meeting which you wanted to have uh, with uh, Delson. I think Delson is open to uh, having meetings. Uh, so we can kind of discuss regarding that. So uh, anything else or sh should we uh, end it now? We'll share the merits and end the session, okay? May suffering once be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. So, so, so. Okay, then we'll uh, meet next time. Uh, let us see uh, if the sister is available or not. I'll be in uh, touch. Uh, okay, May? Okay. Thank, Thank you, Bhante. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Bye. <laughs>